Hello everybody, welcome back to the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. It's Eva here. Uh, today I'm going to go on a popular demand. Um, we've had a lot of requests about making a hinge and the, the mechanics of making a hinge. So we thought that we would show you in a fairly quick tutorial how this is possible. So let's get started. I'm going to head over to my sphere primitive and I'm going to create a sphere center radius starting from the zero axis. We're going to use a diameter of 25 and this is um, because this is a hinge I chose to make it on a locket which is quite a common piece of jewelry to find a hinge on and a very, very simple object to create a piece of jewelry out of. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the length of our sphere to get the shape of a locket, and we're just gonna squash it from the side till we have a good shape for a locket, and maybe a little bit more. Now that we have the shape of our locket, um, we're gonna need to hollow our locket out and cut our locket so that the hinge makes sense. So I'm going to use a cut plane. I'm going to put that cut plane straight through the center uh, in the y-axis of my sphere or oval ellipse and head on over to boolean split. Um, why boolean split? Boolean split because we want the front as I've done here in my layers I've created a front and we want a back and this is going to become important, especially the colors. Well, for me personally, I like to, to use the colors because when I'm building the hinge, I can see what's where. So um, what we also don't have is we don't have an inside because for the moment, it's just a full solid object inside. So let's just change that. Let's go back to our sphere, sphere center radius again. And we're going to create another sp uh, sphere, but with a radius of 22. And this time around, it's going to get squashed down so that we have a little bit of a material thickness inside our locket. And let's just pull the length out a bit. And if I switch off my top, I'll see here, I've got a bit of a framing around it. And we're just going to Boolean difference this out as well. Um, I'm just leaving my delete input on no, because I'm going to use it for both sides. So grab the the front do the same boolean difference uh, and now what we should have is a bit of an empty cavity inside our locket that's perfect we put something inside and next we do the hinge so for this purpose I'm going to put my hinge on the left hand side of my locket I'm just a matter of habit um, from past uh, pieces of jewelry uh, very common to find it on the left uh, on a locket and uh, we are going to fetch our cylinder tool I'm going to have a look here and make sure that I've got my object snaps on because when I go to my front viewport I want to uh, I'm just going to go onto my hinge sides layer I want to create that from the center center part of the left hand part of the locket and we're going to give ourselves a diameter of 1.9. The length is going to be a bit over almost the length of the locket. And this is going to change just now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cylinder into my locket. Because I want it to actually be a part of the locket. It shouldn't be too obvious. Uh, I'm going to do it so that I can barely see the, the back, the, the, the end pieces of my, of my locket here. So they just, it just sticks out here. The, the locket itself just barely comes together. So when we do a, a Boolean difference, uh, I'm going to Boolean the cylinder out of the front and out of the back. You see a nice, a nice cavity for the hinge. Okay, so 
the next thing we want to do is we want to make this hinge look nice on the sides here. It's obviously not going to stick out like that. So just going to head on over to Curves from Objects and create, uh, uh, grab the du duplicate edge uh, from both sides. I'm going to put that into our Boolean layer. And I'm just going to switch that off as well as hinge sides. Now, yes, I, oh, that color is too light. Let's change that green to something a bit darker. There we go. Now, <coughs> how do we join that? Because I already bullioned that out of my, my locket. So I can head on over to my curve tools and choose arc blend or quick curve blend and just click on the one end of the one curve and the other end of the other curve. And there you go. Join that up and create a ex extrusion. I'm just going to pull an extrusion, but I'm going to make it a non-solid. So I just go to solid and say no. Just pull that extrusion out. And when we put our hinge back on again, we'll see it would it would want to cut would want to cut uh, a little bit away of the, the, the hinge at the back here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to offset the surface a bit. We're going to offset the surface by 0.25 millimeters towards the outside, uh, but not as a solid. So again, go into your command line, just click on solid, make it no. And there we go. So I'm going to delete the inside. I'm just going to cut a little bit of that part of the hinge away so that, well, you'll see what it looks like in a moment. I'm just going to flip that surface. So when I perform my Boolean difference, it leaves me with the inside. I can get rid of that curve. And if we put our locket back on again, we see we've still got a bit of meat left for our locket here. Yeah, that's good because that gives it some stability. A goldsmith can always file that away. It's not not a lot, it's 0.2 millimeters thickness there. It's virtually un, unseeable um, with the naked eye once it's finished. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a cut plane to cut this hinge in three. So I'm just going to create one cut plane. Also in our Boolean, in our Boolean layer. And I'm going to mirror that one cut plane over to the other side of my uh, x-axis so that I can um, move it and find the best spot. Ideally, we want to partition this hinge into three parts that are equal in volume, not length, volume. This gives it strength. So if we look at the amount that's been a cut away from the top half of this hinge uh, versus the amount of volume on the inside of this hinge, uh, I would say we could leave a bit more on this. Could even a little bit more. Okay. And this is going to get split again with the two cut plans. And bringing back our front and back, we are now going to put the middle of the hinge into the front part and the side parts of our hinge into the back part. And this is where it starts making sense because as you can see, this is almost like a joint. Uh, the one has to fit inside the other. So let's make the... Um, ah, no, first what we're going to do is we're going to pull in the back part together and we're going to pull in the front parts together. And if we look at it carefully we can see there's a good substantial amount of metal attached to that part, that small part of the hinge. Same as with the back. Uh, also a good substantial amount joined otherwise with the 3D print and a cast it might just fall off or just not cast at all. Now we want to make the hole in our hinge for the for the pin. 
And for that, we're going to head on back to our cylinder again. Just going to back to my bullion layer. So to get the center of our hinge here, um, I have my center, center object snap tool on, but it's, it's not working, as you can see. Um, best thing here would be to create a circle from two points using our uh, curve tools. So circle, uh, two points, always circle, diameter from one side to another side. Here we have a, a circle. Now, this circle I'm going to use as my, uh, uh, for to, 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 to find the center of my object. So let's select the circle and let's head on over to cylinder, grab a cylinder. And thanks to my object snap tools, it finds the center of that circle curve. And we make the diameter for this about 0.85 millimeters thick. Pull it out nice and long. And now we can bullion the pin out of the back and again out of the front. Let me switch that off. And we can see here we have a hole through. This is where the pin will go through at the end of the day, get soldered on both sides nicely with the, with the middle piece movable. Okay, so how does this work? Well, if we go to our gumball and relocate it to the center of our hinge, so you can see it from front perspective that our gumball is in the center of our hinge, I can turn it and test it. And when I test it, I'm going to see a few things. A few things are going to become apparent. Uh, like how it moves inside that joint. So for example, we can see here that the hump of the front part of our locket at some point is going to hit and touch the back the back of the locket and is not going to be able to move past that. You see, they intersect each other. That's a good thing because that means you cannot actually uh, open the locket further than a certain uh, further than a, than a certain amount, which is good because it means you won't wear the metal out as quickly and uh, it, it gives it some robustness as well. If it just flops around uh, and uh, you know opens up and and, and uh, with the back hitting the front and this is uh, this is something you want. Uh, next time I do a design with a hinge, I'll show you how to put a stopper in that can, in cases like this where you don't have the piece itself uh, helping in, in stopping the opening, that can actually prevent it from, from, from opening up all the way. So there you go. That's a hinge. We want to make this look pretty. So what we're going to do... I want to make this look good, so what I'm going to do is I want to cut out a little motif. I'm just going to import a graphic that I prepared. A little peace sign. Make it a bit smaller. And... Uh, Head on back to our, our locket, just close it up. Here we go. Bring the graphic over on to the front. Extrude. Shall we make it follow the shape of our object? Extrude that. Closed. Solid, yes. Gonna bring that down. Not too deep. 
and it's about 0.4 millimeters deep and transform by bending I'm going to go from the center of my piece sign out to the side in the front viewport I'm going to switch my symmetry on yes switch off my object snap just slightly bend both edges and do the same in my side viewport and my right viewport see that in ghosted view that's great and now if we delete oh boolean difference from the front A little peace locket because the world needs a bit of peace right now okay then I hope that you all enjoyed this little tutorial and that you enjoyed building your first hinge if you have any questions leave them in the comments below It'd be great to help you more than happy and if you have any requests uh, for, further, for further tutorials, we'll be bringing you a clasp soon. Uh, just uh, let us know and um, wish you a great day and uh, take care. Thank you.